everybody, this is Sean. And I'm Sam. And we're from Guitar Ramble. This is a new series that we have where we're going to uh, write some backing tracks for you. And we're also going to write some licks. And uh, the one that I wrote, Sam has not yet heard. The one that he wrote, I have not yet heard. So we're going to kind of teach that to one another in the process. You might be able to, uh, to learn the lick yourself. And if you like, uh, we have all this tabbed out and, and standard notation on our website, guitarramble.com. You can find the link below or just type that URL in. Uh, you can also get the backing tracks all in a package, and uh, uh, so find it all there if you're interested, along with a few other licks. So, uh, the one that we have today is in the key of E, and it's just three simple chords. I'll play you the uh, main riff right now. There's two guitar parts on it uh, for rhythm, and it's... That's basically it. The other guitar is going. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's roughly something like that. Anyways, you can check the, the track out. Um, let's start with the uh, the lick that I learned. That sound good to you? Yeah. All, All right. right. So I'm gonna play the track, and I'm gonna play the lick, and then uh, we're gonna break it down and talk about why I chose the notes that I chose. So it's the first time I've heard that, by the way. First time he's heard it. Okay, so I'm going to break this lick down into a few different sections and maybe uh, throw in some analysis here. So uh, it's it's based around primarily this one motive that I came up with that centers around the E uh, dominant arpeggio. So that would be or E dominant seven arpeggio. Yeah, I'm on uh, fret seven with my second finger there. And we throw some tabs in on that. Um, but the lick starts off like this. It's on scale degree three. And I'm walking up from scale degree three, I go back to one, two, three. Four, three. And then this is where the arpeggio happens. One, flat seven, flat seven. So, uh, that, that's the first part. Yeah, and feel free, as much as you'd like, to uh, take advantage of that string cross slur right there where... If you want that to ring out, you can use it. It clashes so much because it's a, a, a second apart, and uh, not even just a second, but a minor second. It's like playing both those notes at the same time. It's a, it's a uh, very dissonant sound. But you can use that because it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. It fits the, the style maybe. So that's the first part. And then the uh, second half of that is... Yeah, again, making that uh, very dissonant interval ring if you choose to. Uh, but you can just play. You cannot let them ring also. Okay, um, and then we do a similar riff again. And again, I'm giving some dissonance with this little major second interval this time. All right, so this uh, starts off the same way. Now I'm um, really highlighting the A chord going to the D or D-ish chord by hitting the, there's the three and the five of A. And then I like to hit, you know, I go to a D right there, which fits super well over a D chord, but I'm also hitting the, uh, the two of D. Yeah, I like the other one. Yeah, so just like you played it. So I'll put all those together for you. I know it's a bit kind of a big chunk, but Whew. 
That's it. Yeah. Okay. The last Close. half. <laughs> that's pretty good. The last half of this is going to start off with the same motive. Uh, repetition is friendly to the listeners. So I'm going to go. And this is where it changes up, uh, just like it did in the last one. That's uh, walking down to get me to a, a new area in which I can uh, throw something new to the listener. And this is a great time to throw something new to the listener because they've heard that same little motive a few times. So. I'm in new territory now. So here's what I did there. Starts off the same way, but here's the new part. That's just three, one, flat sev, just the arpeggio again, and then six, five. Six is kind of used as a passing tone to get to the another really good chord tone, the five. And then here is the, uh, the new section. And it starts with a new motive, a new idea, uh, based upon this rhythm that's da 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 da. And then I'm going to repeat that same rhythmic motive uh, moving up diatonically, meaning within the same key in E mixolydian. So uh, the first part. Okay, and we're since we're trying to keep it in the key, the shape is going to change as I move north of the neck here. So the next starting point is this flat seven. <laughs> so, um, all together, that is. Uh, you think you can play the whole lick? Uh, maybe. All right. Uh, let's let's try it. Slow speed. We're not. Well, if you can't, we'll just cut it. <laughs> uh. Just a little bit of the structure, which is probably easier to think about when you have the backing track going along. Sure, yeah. Uh, it's kind of a good halfway point. Right. And then we had. It's like an abridged version of the way it was played at the beginning. Right. Yeah, and just a little, a little different because I'm trying to take us to new territory. So. <laughs> nice with Zach Wild Squeal. All that right, cool. Nice. So that's my lick. We're, we're going to hear Sam's now, yeah? <sighs> yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> and some bluesiness and a uh, couple yeah yeah there's some a lot of notes for me to learn <laughs> just a few just a few <laughs> I thought it'd be like a, some stupid pattern thing I gotta do it's gonna like <laughs> well, oh I can do that well there, you know to, the, to that point there are some patterns in there uh, that okay. repeat all right all right so there's some like little little segments in there that that repeat itself so I'm definitely gonna have to hear parts of that again but I, I, I dug it cool I appreciate it um so on that one um again like Sean talked about on his Centered around the E mixolydian kind of scale, so I wanted to emphasize that flat seven, the D note. Should we play that scale for him? Yeah, we can play the scale. Yeah, but yeah uh, flat seven, like we talked about for the mixolydian scale, is the only difference between that and the regular E major scale. So the mixolydian versus this. So that D note is the biggest. Really grabs your ear. D instead of D 
sharp. So uh, this lick's based around uh, the E mixolydian and an E7 arpeggio is how it kind of starts okay. out. So starting with the third of that arpeggio, starting on the uh, with the G sharp there on the um, uh, 11th fret on the A string, and then we're gonna go up to uh, three. Five. So that's the fifth, and then the flat seven on the next string. Yeah. And then we're gonna hit uh, the ninth, which is F sharp on the G string. And then up to the 11th, which is an A on the 14th fret. Yep. So the, the, the kind of outlining. Right. And so uh, you go up, back down to that F sharp. Mm -hmm. And then you have that minor third into the major third, the G to the G sharp slide. Okay. And then the next note, uh, again, outlining that E7 uh, uh, arpeggio is the B, the fifth, mm -hmm. on the 12th fret, up to the seventh, uh, flat seven on the, uh, the D, mm -hmm. back down to the B, and then uh, playing the um, 13th or the C sharp on the 14th fret, kind of bending back up to that D. And you don't bend back down. Kind of go up, don't come back down. And sexy then, that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So too. <laughs> right, so that whole little sequence. And again, uh, this doesn't start right on the downbeat. This is starting on the E of the first beat. So if we're subdividing mm -hmm. a 16th, one E and a, we're going to start on the E. Uh, so, so. <laughs> shift down to the 10th fret and play uh, a double stop, uh, which is uh, you're going to hold the D, that flat 7, on the high E down while you bend the A on the B string on the 10th fret up to the B here. So, a classic country, the, country sound. You get like a, and the cool thing with that... The cool thing with that is you're outlining still that E7, so you're bending from that A note up to the B, which is the fifth, so you end up with this cool E7 sound. Yeah. Just another way to get to that. So there's a, you bend up, hit it, and then you hit it again, bring it back down. Yeah. And then there's another minor third to major third slide. repeating that same thing we did at the beginning, right? Same rhythm, okay. uh, same fingering. Now before we, the only thing that changes is the very end of it, so we still have the... Now we're just gonna go to the C sharp. Right, so that's the difference, and then the little cheeky bend from the F sharp back down to the E on the first string. Okay. And it's that same, the way it starts is that same kind of displaced starting with the, the 116th note rest kind of thing at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and then the way we end it to get out of it uh, over the, uh, what is it, a D and the A chord or an A and the D chord? Mm -hmm. A, D, yeah. It's kind of playing around with those chord tones. Um, so uh, we come down to the D 
note on the 10th fret of the first string. Mm -hmm. Start there, slide down. Next string is an A. And then we're coming down like an A arpeggio, basically. And then we do... Because it's the three of E. Right, so, so, right, so it's yeah. the third of the, yeah, of the E chord, even though technically it's on beat four of the D chord. There's no way I can get that like up to speed just yet, but... Well, like we said, there are a couple of more. Uh, there's a couple of more licks on the website with the package. You can download that and the backing track. You can try to learn these along with the notation and everything. Uh, but uh, let us know if you have any questions about this stuff or uh, comment on it. If you record your own lick to the backing track, yeah. post it, share it, tag and, us. Uh, tag us. Uh, so hopefully you enjoyed it and uh, see you in the next one.